you know, take over when the focus stops and I have to play a lead break, I'm gone. Well, sometimes I'm actually aware of it occasionally. I know what I'm doing. But mainly, I think I'm just, I'm just gone. I mean, it's like, like being in trance or whatever. And, and I don't even know what I've played unless I hear the tape back, which, like every gig we record on the mixing desk, and I take it back and listen to it. And then I, I understand what I've actually played. But at, this, at the time when I play, I don't... I don't... <laughs> greatest guitar in the world but when I was 16 years old and I played with the Scorpions and my brother was playing the rhythm guitar I was playing the lead guitar and I was playing a Les Paul he was playing this guitar so when his when I brought a string we had to swap very quick so my brother had to give me his flying V to so we, we, we were able to continue and by that time I found out that this guitar sounded really good for me, for my personal taste. This one is 1955. I think actually twice because I smashed the guitar twice. And when I smashed the guitar twice, this error came off plus that again. So I don't know how many times it has been broken, but every time I go back, it played better than, than ever. If you like the guitar and it, got, it gets damaged, it's very important to bring it to a professional you know, repairmen or whatever you call those people. Using for the past two years. It's hard, heavy. I'm not playing it that way for a start, which most probably people, you know, do when they start playing the guitar. But if you use this part of the plectrum, especially if it has got something like that on it, like something like that, it gives you like a kind of... So, so if I play something like... So it's up and down. I know that well, somebody told me that uh, a producer told me that many people can't do that because they have to go like... Which is much, much harder. But unfortunately they can't do it up and down, which gives you the speed if you need it. doing is I put my whatever this part is called I put that on the strings as uh, if you do it too much it goes like if you don't do it at all it goes like that if you just put it in the right position it goes like so if you hear a clean sound it's, well, it's I'm taking it like off. looking into a book where it says you should play this and this and this. I think it's much more original if you just mess up, well, you know, just go all over the place and then if you're lucky, you find a chord, I just mess around and go like, oh, that's a good chord, and I record it and then I just stick to this chord.
now we come to one of the most important aspects of playing, which is scales. From the keyboards, I actually pick up from that. If it's a minor or a major, that's the difference in a scale. You see, like, if you go like something like... It's a major, one, okay? If it's a minor, you go... So you can't play a major to a minor or a minor to a major. Now let's have a look at left hand tricks. By just by crossing over the E string over the A string. And if you want to, you can do it like try to do a, a, the big band. Uh, what is it called? The, 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 I don't know if I, can, if I get it together now. It's like involving all strings. If I play something like and bend the neck. At the same time, which is like kind of a tremolo. I think I use all the time is. Uh... have to for for a lead track like which I wouldn't be able to do with my finger with I mean without that okay but things like which almost sound like a slide but it's actually my fingers It's possible to play without actually hitting the strings. Spare tracks. And so I go for it and play like seven lead breaks and try to pick the best one. Like if I can't make up my mind which lead break is better out of the seven, but there are two which are main, the main ones I like because there's one in this lead break and there's one bit in this lead break we try to connect them, and that's it. And, and you know, each speaker you know, has got a different sound. So you pick the best one, you put the microphone right in front of it, then you put uh, another microphone, like here, to pick it up from that um, distance. And then you, know, you use another microphone, which is somewhere in the room for ambience. <laughs> like 16 years old and I started playing guitar when I was nine. For seven years I copied people like The Shadows, The Beatles, the, like Leslie West, Jimmy Page, and the, like the whole lot, whatever happened at the time. After seven years I thought it was enough for me, what, what I learned from them, to start, you know, to, to develop my own style. And therefore I stopped buying uh, records. I mean, I, did still listen like to radio and whatever. It could have been any type of music. But um, I just decided at the time that I wanted to, you know, to develop my own style. So therefore I just practiced, you know, whatever came out of myself. Uh, obviously influenced by what I've done before. But uh, like two or three years later, I had an instinctive kind of uh, my own style because I put it all together and and there it went, you know, like, and here I am. 